Hi, I'm Rosalind from English Experts and today we're going to discuss Identity in the White Tiger by Aravind Diga. Identity is one of the novel's major themes. Before we start, let's remind ourselves of what theme means. I like to think of it as a big idea or major concern of a book, poem, play, film or anything else for that matter that is developed over time. We've already looked at the theme of corruption in The White Tiger, so how does identity fit in? Identity refers to the image or picture that we develop about ourselves over our lifetime. It's only natural that as we change, so does our identity, but as Balram the narrator makes clear, in certain parts of Indian society, identity is determined by the caste or social class a person belongs to. And as he goes on to add, the caste system is particularly prevalent in rural communities such as Laxmangar, Balram's village. Balram himself is a halwai or sweet maker, so in theory his identity as a lower class citizen is fixed at birth. Nevertheless, as the example of his father Vikram, a rickshaw puller, proves, caste is perhaps not as fixed as in the past. Either way, Vikram remains in a poorly paid subservient role and is unable to ascend the social ladder, remaining a rickshaw puller until his death from tuberculosis. Over the course of the novel, Balram undergoes a series of identity changes, most strikingly demonstrated by his changing names. In the first chapter, he tells us that when he was still at school, he did not have a name at all, being known simply as Munna or Boy because his family was too busy to name him. Perhaps Adiga does this to make us wonder how many similar Munnas with anonymous fates there are in India, or perhaps he wants us to appreciate the extent of Bahram's reincarnation as a successful businessman. It is his teacher, Mr. Krishna, who renames him, and though this rechristening, incidentally the name of the god Krishna's sidekick, is not exactly complimentary, at the very least it suggests that Balram is open to the idea of reinventing himself. Shortly afterwards, he is singled out for special mention by a visiting school inspector, who, finding him much more capable than his peers, brands him the White Tiger, in acknowledgement of his uniqueness. Therefore, in a relatively brief period of time, Balram has changed his name and identity several times, each time elevating himself from his humble beginnings. However, in keeping with his family's poor economic and social status, Balram is soon removed from school and put to work in a tea shop. Despite his father's ambitions for his son, it appears that like him, Balram will remain a menial worker. Nevertheless, the sense of being special that the name of the White Tiger confers remains with Balram throughout his childhood, although arguably he never completely shakes off the feeling of being a servant. We will return to this idea shortly. After training as a driver, Balram takes on the role of chauffeur at the house of the Stork, one of the Laxmangar landlords. Throughout his lengthy retelling of his employment as a driver, it gradually becomes clear that Balram is beginning to think of himself as someone who can achieve more. After exposing the number one driver, Ram Prasad, as a Muslim, Bahram once more demonstrates his determination to improve his status and take control of his own destiny. Although Balram remains the servant of another man, nevertheless he has effectively challenged the identity that his birthright as a poor lower caste villager would suggest. He has escaped the fate of his father and brother Kishan, and as his confidence grows, he even rejects his grandmother Kusum's demands that he be married, cementing his break with the past forever. After this incident, he never returns to Laxmangar again. The pivotal moment in the novel is, of course, Balram's brutal murder of Ashok, his master. Although alluded to at the end of the first chapter, it is not until much later than the gruesome event is described and Balram's new identity as a murderer is fully realised. The slaying of Ashok, however, opens the door for Balram's freedom, enabling him to steal a large quantity of Ashok's money and head to Bangalore, India's up-and-coming technology and outsourcing city. It is here in Bangalore that Balram undergoes his final transformation of the novel. Spotting an opportunity in the market for transporting call centre workers to and from their offices, Balram bribes the police with Ashok's money and succeeds in overturning his rivals. His own driving business is called White Tiger Drivers, and it is interesting at this point to reflect on the extent to which Balram has changed. Once the powerless servant of rich men, Balram is now employing the same tactics as his former masters and is arguably throwing off the mantle of servitude forever, an impression further consolidated when he once more bribes the police to cover up the accidental pilling of a street child by one of his drivers. 
The final twist in the winding road of Balram's identity comes when we discover that he has discarded his old name and taken on his former masters. The owner of White Tiger Drivers is none other than Mr. Ashok Sharma. Now, it seems, the transformation of Munna, the poor village boy, is complete, though in his final words to the Chinese Premier, Balram hints that he is ready to have children now, yet another identity in the many he has already assumed. Before I go, I'd like to suggest a few reasons that Aravinda Diga felt compelled to create this trajectory for his protagonist. First, it can be argued that Adiga wants to show that the once omnipotent caste system is a dying institution, and now more than ever, ambitious men and women can overcome its confines and succeed. Identity, therefore, is not fixed, but malleable in the right hands. Nevertheless, when we consider what Bahram has had to do to gain his freedom, it may be argued that the caste system still exerts considerable influence. On the other hand, perhaps Adiga wishes the reader to appreciate and even admire Balram for overcoming the obstacles of his birth. Unwilling to lie down and be crushed by Kusum, Balram shows considerable character and in this context even the murder of Ashok may be understood if not forgiven. However, despite his apparent transformation, the reader is left wondering whether Balram's earliest influences, the back-breaking work of his father, the servitude of his brother and other human spiders, is truly overcome by the end of the novel. As Balram himself observes, once a servant, always a servant. Therefore, in addition to suggesting that identity is malleable, perhaps Adiga wants to posit that childhood experiences and influence play a particularly potent role in determining a person's identity. Finally, it may be argued that Adiga wishes to demonstrate that several or more identities can coexist in the same person, and that even if new identities are taken on, the old ones do not cease to exert influence. Humans are complex creatures, and in his multifaceted portrayal of Balram, Adiga does much to remind the reader of this fact. Thanks for listening to this discussion of the theme of identity in The White Tiger. If this was helpful, please make sure you check out my video explainers on the theme of corruption in the novel, as well as my analysis of the epistolary form that Adigo uses to narrate the story. Don't forget to subscribe to English Expert, and please feel free to leave a share, leave a comment, or let me know if there's something in particular you would like me to cover. Thanks, and see you next time.